These two works are an end point for the project I guess I've been working on for nearly four years, uh, contemplating Macan, um, particularly around the time he was uh, lost in Sydney, so the missing hours, so to speak. I, I almost look at it in some ways as if um, this does quite overtly uh, refer to not only Macan's um, body of work called The View from the Top of the Cliff, based on those views from Mirawai looking to the, the blazing sunset. The aesthetic or, or, or the, the response with the text work is almost like sky writing. It's almost like a kind of a, um, you know, voices fading off. Not, not plunging, not, not precipitous, but there's a thermal. There's some hot air in that one that's blowing away the kind of West Coast geometries and, um, uh, I don't know, ley lines of um, celestial bodies and plunging profiles of West Coast rockery and glistening black sand. So both of them are named after McCann's work, obviously, the view from the top of the cliff from the 70, 71 and Let Be, Let Be, which was the title of an earlier painting of McCann's. But I think I was viscerally trying to let go. <laughs> you know, this, this was supposed to be punctuation. So in a sense, I guess that's why it's, it's so crammed or ratcheted up with text and reference because it's almost, you know, the shards of the whole project are swept together and they're scattered. There's a wonderful American writer called Rebecca Solnit. Uh, she's an essayist and she said, a hero is a disaster. And this keeps coming back to me when I think about, you know, I've had the odd comment, are you still working on that McCann thing? So there's a, you know, I've been really looking forward to seeing these two works and I haven't seen them together for that very reason that it feels like, um, you know, I am at the view from the top of the cliff, this is it, this is, you know, we're about to end something here. The end of the project finds its apotheosis in this large temporary work, which in some ways I'm very thrilled about it because the dreams of a final theory, yes, there's almost this desire on this scale to be conclusive again, in some way to sort of um, uh, fully inhabit the Macanian drama. Um, um, but again, there's, all, there's, there's a, a tension, particularly for the viewer, where when you stand back and feel this wall of painterly um, uh, moment, you've got this, at the same le level, there's this kind of a, uh, playful text and phraseology that uh, competes with the implied content of the Stations of the Cross and the Falls. So there's a kind of a, um, I suppose what I regard as a kind of a tension between um, a set of uh, figurative urges being undercut with diagrammatic punctuation and uh, diverse and, and digressive texts, which um, are contemporary, are from the internet, are from Macan, are from St. Augustine, um, are from maps in Ireland, uh, are, are bits of, bits of um, Dunedin, uh, bits of Cay Road, and again a set, a set of, um, you know, uh, this kind of shimmering quality with the, uh, 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 a kind of a um, a reflective paint which gives that slippage of, um, you know, uh, depth and an aquatic kind of coastal dreaminess. So um, it's, it's McCann unhinged in a way. There's a kind of a blurring of um, uh, McCannian moments. And I guess in that sense, that's a visual um, analogy for my extrapolations of what happened with Colin when he got lost in Sydney in 84 on the eve of his great um, uh, retrospective. Um, the sense of this melding of the forces that have informed and shaped his work seem to all at once swirl in this, in this kind of personally tragic um, moment. And I guess I'm hoping that the work can in some way have that dissipation and that um, um, that grandiosity and that pungency, I suppose.